Hey fam, it's M.A. Truth. It's been a minute. <clears throat> Family and life and things, you know, crop up and you got to deal with all of that. So that's what I've been up to. And even in all of that, I've been observing. And what I've been observing, from my perspective, is still quite tragic to me. How our people refuse to change their ways. Many would prefer to continue doing what they've been doing all their days, expecting a different result. I think most of us know that that's the height of insanity. The same madness that created this, our situation is not going to change our situation. We've been sharing a lot of information with each other, uh, especially through uh, King Drop and the uh, 432 family. A lot of information, a lot of drop, things that we should be taking to heart. But like I said, many just refuse to change their ways. One thing I would like to focus on again is our language, the words that we use. Many of us have been educated and we understand, overstand, that we speak a bastardized language. What is known as English is a derivative of the Germanic languages. You can take my word for it, look it up. There's too much information out here for us to continue to do the same bullshit that we've been doing. Why do you continue to refer to yourself as an African American? No such animal. Stop saying that. Lex Will has uh, shown many how to change your uh, ethnicity from the from the forms that you have to get from Social Security office. Uh, check him out. Listen to what the man is saying. He's telling you the truth. If you look at that form, it clearly states on there that at black or African American is, is something from, I don't have the paper in front of me. Look it up, but it's bullshit. Why do you keep referring to yourselves as a color? We're not black, damn it. We are not black. We're not African Americans. This is our land right here, North, South, and Central America. We was here first. We was always here. This is our land. It was stolen from us, but damn, if y'all keep talking that same BS. I'm African American. I'm black. I mean, I understand the context in which these words are used. But you also got to understand that when you keep speaking that crap, you're, you're just reinforcing the spell that's been put on you, put on us as a people. Yes, this is a frequency war. Learn the frequencies. Overstand what this thing is about and quit falling into that hole, that same hole. You've been walking over that hole all your lives and you still fall into that same hole. When you gonna learn to walk around that sucker? Circle the square. So I chose this particular uh, video to try to lend some credence to what I've been, what I just mentioned. The power of words. Uh, now I haven't listened to the whole thing so I'm gonna be kind of diving into this with you. But I want you to take check it out. It ain't long. It's about 17 minutes, and I have every intention of trying to do the whole thing this time. Okay? Here we go. Check this out. Words and communication are my passion, which is why I'm here to speak to you this afternoon about the power of words. Words count. Words count because they condition how we think, what we do, and how we feel. Words are powerful. 
Now, the third law of physics states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. In my lexical world, I have a similar theory, and it goes like this. For every statement, there is a positive, a negative, and a neutral way of making that statement. In other words, there's a nice way, a not-so-nice way, and a neutral way of saying what you're saying. Or well, as my mother said when I was growing up, Susan, there's always a nice way to get your point across. Your job is to find it. My mother was a stickler on words, a stickler. Other people's offspring were called children, not kids. Kids were baby goats. We never said shut up in our home. Shut up was not civil. It wasn't polite. It wasn't appropriate. We said, please be quiet. And she detested the word cute. At almost five feet, not barely, not barely, almost five feet, people always referred to her as cute. And she detested it. She said, babies are cute. Puppies are cute. I don't want to be cute. In later years, I would come to appreciate her sentiments when a five foot six companion, male companion of mine, was consistently referred to by a colleague of mine as your little friend. Your little friend. As though this person were some replica in miniature of a real live human being. She didn't mean to, do we ever? Yet how often do we debase, demean, diminish, discourage, perhaps even destroy the creativity of another individual because of the words we use? And it's not about the words, because they don't remember the words, but it is about the words because they make you feel, and that's what they remember, how, you, how they make you feel. Those words can flip, too. Just as we might make people feel down, we can bring them up. Case in point, I was in a ballet recital as a child. I gave new definition to the word awful. I was horrendous. And when I approached my mother at the end of the recital, I looked up with her like children do with that guilt. I know you know we both know. How'd I do? I can still see her smile and her eyes dancing as she looked down at me and she said, your potential for improvement is infinite. <laughs> Many years later, always in the dancing environment, a young man would ask me to dance in a disco. Now I'm dating myself here. He came up, he asked me to dance, and my response was with a girlfriend who's having a meltdown. We've all had those moments, right? And I said, not right now, thank you. I, I've got some issues. My friend's having a meltdown. And he sees those three words. Not right now? Not right now? Does that mean I should check back later? And spontaneously, without even thinking, I looked at him. I said, yes, by all means, if some young woman, I was about 26, Yes, by all means, if some young woman hasn't been fortunate enough to secure your intentions by the end of the evening, by all means, come back. And he said, and after he closed his mouth, he said, I've just been shut down. I feel so good, but I've just been shut down. Our words. A dear friend of mine who did not have the benefit, probably, of good parenting skills just mentioned to me last week, and it broke my heart. She said, you don't know what it would have meant to me if at any point in my life, any point in my life, my parents had just said to me, I believe in you. I believe in you. The power of words. How often in our daily living don't we sabotage our, our conversation? How often do you say, I must, I have to? I must, I have to, instead of choose, I want to. How often, right? Like we're victims in lives that are choreographed by someone other than ourselves. I have to, I must. How about the just and the only? How many of you just or only? Do, yeah, nobody just or only does anything. Do you want to do business with somebody who just or only? Or do you want to do business with somebody who focuses, concentrates, or specializes? How about that? Focus, concentrate, specialize. There's so many words. It, it, there, there's so many words that we use as fillers. So many words that we use as fillers. I just lost the train of my thought. You know, you just really hate that, and sometimes you just got to come clean when that happens. Um, we sabotage our words with what we say. I had I sent an email to a friend, and I said, could you please add this man's name to our mailing list? And I realized that that's not what I meant at all. It wasn't a question. It was a statement. Mine was a declaration. 
please add his name. How often don't we do that with our emails? You learn an awful lot about another language and culture when you work in someone else's. I was an interpreter for 30 years. I worked for the Italian government. I learned some great things. It was a great gig. The first thing they taught me is that creativity is for those, uh, rules are made for people who lack cre creativity. That's how it goes. Rules are made for people who lack creativity. Isn't that great? The other thing they taught me is the future, a lot of things, but these stick out in my mind. The future of probability. Do you know how the future of probability works? Bear with me on this. This is lovely. They have the word if in Italian. Say, S-E, say. Say, dove si piovere, if it should rain. Say, dove si nevicare, if it should snow. But they never use it with reference to their own personal endeavors. They will say, when I will, as though it were imminent, because it's going to happen. Isn't that incredibly powerful and positive? When I will finish my dissertation. When I will write the bestseller. When I will get that job or that promotion. Isn't that not great? The power of positive thinking. One of my strongest learning moments was with a gentleman, an accountant, and we were having this conversation in Italian. You know how we all have certain words, certain expressions, and our friends have certain expressions, and by association we start using those expressions. Am I right? Are you with me? Okay. And, and we also have words that we use as fillers, like, like, and, you know, and, if you will, outrageous, and the ALY words, basically, fundamentally, essentially, they add nothing to content, but they take up time and space, and we use them, they're habits. Well, in Italian, you know, is I capito. I capito. You understand? You know? So I was telling this story, and apparently I must have used I capito more than one time. And when I was all finished, at the end of the conversation, he looked down at me. Very effective. You want to connect with somebody, you put your chin up like that, it smacks of arrogance. Detached. Aloof. You don't really care. He lowered his chin, and he looked at me. And he said, you asked me if I understood. I'm Italian. I've been speaking the language for 40 years. I understand it. How long have you been speaking Italian? Are you sure that what you said is what you meant, that what you meant is what you said? And furthermore, are you sure that the words that you used conveyed your intention? And if not, would the more appropriate question not have been, have I explained myself? Heavy, huh? I still don't use that phrase. Do you understand? I was escorting a VIP delegation at the Pentagon, VIP military. One of the junior officers came up and said, you guys, you guys, could I get you to come over here, please? When a senior Italian Navy Admiral put his hands behind his back, he came up and he said, excuse me, but is you guys the term you customarily use in the collective to refer to senior military officers? You guys. I have no idea if she's still using that. But it isn't all doom and gloom. I have some cute stories, too. Another gentleman, an attache, was called to the Pentagon to receive an award prior to his departure. It was a huge award. It was the first time he winged it, flew without a net. Generally, people always wrote his comments for him, but this time he did it on his own. He gets to the Pentagon and he says, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you very much for this honor which you give to me. I thank you very much. It's a big honor. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And my wife, who she cannot be here, you know, because she already go back to my country. She thank you from her bottom, too. <laughs> all in the words. All in the words. And this issue with language becomes even more apparent in the healthcare industry. I went from interpreter to translator. Now I'm a medical professional. I'm a, a clinician, a speech-language pathologist. I work in geriatrics, and I work with people recovering from stroke. I teach them how to speak again. I work with swallow, memory, dementia. And it's an issue. The biggest problem in healthcare, as you probably know, is the ability of the medical professional to transfer the clinical expertise into language that other people understand so that they can make informed health choices. Am I right? Now, in my particular world, rehabilitative medicine, the big issue is want. You cannot ever make another person want. Not going to happen. You can conjole, you can encourage, you can inspire to get them to want. But you can't make them want. So my first step is to get the person to want. After I get them to want, I have to take them to the next level, to believe in themselves that they can. Can is the second part.
And after that, I have to get them to commit what it's going to take to get them to the final stage, to get them where we need them to be. And I'm going to stop it right there. I'll put the link to this in the uh, comment section so that, uh, so that you can view this on your own. Just take, take the babies out of her bath water. <laughs> but you get the gist of what she's saying. Words, again, are frequency. The word has a frequency. It resonates within you. Every word that we speak resonates. It vibrates. It'll either enhance you or it can destroy you. And my greatest prayer for all of us is that we will learn to collectively stop using words that destroy us. Stop using the labels that have been assigned to us by a bastardized people. Stop using them. Don't refer to yourself as something that you know you are not. We've got to stop killing ourselves with our mouths. Even scripture talks about the power of the tongue. We've got to stand up 